Talking about big tech, uh, Netflix, everything like that, there's something that's been going on. It's probably been going on for, along for a couple of months now. Um, poor old Mr. Zuckerberg dr dragged in front of the Congress and, and everything like that. But Good. And <laughs> he, does, he does it. Antitrust. Antitrust. Uh, antitrust laws against these big tech people are dis people like they're, they're trying to break up all these big tech companies what are your thoughts is it an advantage is it a disadvantage but what should we be doing and where should we be going with that well the the antitrust laws are real because we i mean it's always been there right rockefeller was made to blow up his company yeah back in the day you know, Bill Gates was forced to blow up his company and separate it all out. And it's because, and fair play to a government, when one company becomes a massive monopoly and they have, you know, like, like Facebook have five million bits of data on every single one of us. Yeah. That's more information than the government has. Yeah. So that, they're at risk. So I think it's, I actually do think that it's probably wise for a government to limit the controls that mm -hmm. a big business has. Especially, um, you know, especially a Marxist left-leaning company like Facebook, right? Because they, they're just, you just never know what's next, right? Yep. So that's, that would be a real concern for a government. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is they don't have the same rules. So we have media rules in Australia. If you discriminate against somebody, right, there is an entire process of what to happen. Facebook, none. Yeah. And in Australia, actually, right now, they're, they're, they're actually going to drag our social media platforms under the same... Um, media code yeah. as, as the rest, right? Yeah. Which is which is a huge thing, because right now you can say anything. And and what if, if you watch that Cambridge Analytica story mm. unfold? Like um, the Russians did pay Facebook to produce ads um, to um, to swing the American election. Now I'm not suggesting Trump was involved, yeah. but but we know that Russians did it. They wanted Trump in, and so yeah. they spent like. There, there is a story that has come out of Facebook where there were executives from Facebook who went to Russia and came home with rubles because they had just done deals. Like it was, it was a real thing, right? Yeah. So, so that, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. And, and, and by the way, nothing illegal. I can run ads. Yeah. I, you know, I could run ads tomorrow for Scott Morrison, and and it w and I wouldn't have to get his compliance to do it. Mm. So that's that's what took place. That obviously needs to be cleared up yeah. because because it's. Um, it's not fair on the rest of the media world to, to not have to play by these rules. or well, they have to play by rules that these guys don't have to. But um, I think what does it mean for us? I think it's going to mean very little. How, how do you, but like as a business owner, if they bring in like the, the media, like legislation, etc. for social media. The costs will go up. The costs will go up because obviously they'll need a, a legal team running all, all that stuff. But then we are limited and we are then, I mean, we always talk about it all the time that there's suspicions of throttling and stuff on Facebook of certain content and everything. Yeah. Will that then diminish the power of, of these big organisations? Probably, um, but they'll find a way around it. But what yeah. about for us? So we will have to pay a higher price yeah. for our ads because they're just going to factor all those overhead back in the pricing. But what that will actually interestingly mean, like as micro, like me in my world or you in your world, what that would actually mean is probably a lot of competitors will leave. Yep. If the price was to be twice as much for Facebook tomorrow, more than twice, more than half the people would leave. Yeah. Which would leave it wide open for anybody in any industry. So remember, we, we, we don't care. We do not care for Facebook at all or Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok or the, the Fin Review or the Australia. Like we do not care. Don't what we about care about, mm -hmm. what we care about, is can I put my business in front of the right people and profitably market my business? That's what we care yeah. about. So when Facebook, Facebook will go through a journey and it will either choke or it will come back, and we will either find something else or it'll become viable again. Yeah, you know, like, like that's why we, like, you know, when people say to me, "Oh man, it's so bad that Instagram have taken how many likes you get off your posts and Facebook," and I'm like, "Who cares? We don't care. We don't care about likes." Mm. We care about can I profitably put my business in front of people? Yeah. And if you can do that, then we should not be wedded to platform yeah. or technology. That's why I don't really care. Because by the time Facebook fails, something else will be around. I think one of my big 
conundrums, I suppose, because I mean, this juxtaposition of like breaking up these big tech firms, like breaking them off into their little segments. I get that they're buying, like, so for example, Google is trying to buy, and the ACCC are trying to stop, or they're really looking into Google buying Fitbit for $3.3 billion. And it's purely just so that they can get our data. Like they just want to know how many steps people are doing. But there's a lot more data in the back end for that. But part of me is is saying, oh, privacy and yeah, got to be protected from all that sort of stuff. But the other part of me is like, well, they can create a much better better product for me if they know all my data. It's the same cat and mouse that's been around forever. Like you could imagine when they first started printing the newspaper and everyone went top of the train station off their steam train with their little flat cap and got their newspaper, you know, you know, these, the, the people that own the newspaper were able to tell, oh, more people in this part of the country were buying this newspaper than they were this newspaper. They've been data mining forever. It's just looking at your business and learning out what works. You know, should Google buy Fitbit? I mean, it's a bloody smart move. Yeah. I get, because they get to see where everybody walks to work, not only steps, where they go, where they stop. Mm -hmm. They stopped 15 minutes at a coffee shop. Like it, 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 it's the same as what we've got in here. It knows everything we go and where we go and how long we pause for and where we check in. So that's a lot of information. Now, there is a part of me, there's a part of me that thinks, I don't want Google to have that much information. There's definitely a part of me that thinks that. And then at the same time, I think, well, that stuff's been going on forever. Yeah. So, you know, the, the sinister person would say it's a bad idea. Um, part of me thinks that's the role of government to some degree, would be to intervene so they don't exploit us. And then at the end of the day, we're being exploited. Yeah. And, and, but the same holes in the system that Google can use, I can use. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not too, too scared about Big Brother. It doesn't, like, I, I just don't know what, what's the alternative? Mm. You know, what's the alternative? I mean, you know, we unplugged and went around Australia in a caravan for two and a half years, but you can't do that forever. Yeah. Well, you can, but your good life's going to suck after a point, you know. So, it, I don't know. The, the way I look at it is God called me for tw to be alive. In, in bought, you know, I was born in 1978 and I'm called to be running business in 2019. He knew that. Yeah. He knew what this place was going to be like. He knew what, what technology was going to be involved and he still called me forward. So, if he, if he trusts me to be alive now, then why would I complain about the world that we live in? You know, I just got to go about doing my best to be a light to other people and point them back to him. And what's this, because I mean, for me, I'm more leaning on the side of, I don't care what data they've got for me because like Siri makes recommendations without me even asking her because she knows everything about me. Like I, I'm, I, it just makes my life easier. But at what point, I, I know there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there, especially especially Christians. We, we sometimes can be, be the worst of those sorts of things. You know, Mark of the Beast and all those sorts of things. At what point should we protect ourselves? And how? Go and get a yurt and live in a hill. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't run a business. Yeah. Got to be in the game. Yeah. And I, I, I don't mind the game. You know, like, like I am, you know, if I was like, well, if you get Alexa in your house, then they know and they're going to rob you. I'm like, yes. And there's probably some times that that's going to take place. But I'm also going to put the Kingdom Business podcast on Alexa so that people can yeah. yell out from the lounge room, can you play the latest episode? So the same system that you could whinge about, I'm just going to milk it and talk about Jesus on it. Like, I'm, everyone's like, you know, Facebook is of the devil. Really? I talk about God on Facebook every day. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not be too upset. Yeah, that's awesome.